The retro fleet is coming! The retro fleet is coming! The retro! The retro! The retro fleet is coming! channel this one bam there it is hey guys today I'm excited to announce that the safer watch app and Nick off-duty have partnered and the safer watch app is gonna sponsor today's video safer watch is a mobile app that gives you a direct line to law enforcement so you can report suspicious activity crime tips and even online threats such as a school shooting threat there's also tons of other category shortcuts that I'm gonna let you guys go to the app and explore yourself so not only can you send text messages but you can send photos videos screen recordings audio recordings to your local law enforcement agencies since the app's launch has already helped stop and prevent school shootings it's helped prevent suicides and it's even helped put away serious crime offenders the app works now the amazing thing about this app is not only do you send messages and tips but you also receive real-time alerts and notifications from your local law enforcement agencies that are utilizing SaferWatch app. All right guys, enough is enough. If you want to learn more about the SaferWatch app, visit saferwatchapp.com. You can go there, see if your local law enforcement agency is utilizing the program. If not, contact them, let them know, hey, you guys need to get on SaferWatch. You can also download the app in the App Store, whether it be Apple or Android. It's a free app, so what are you waiting for? SaferWatchApp.com. If you see something, say something, then send something. All right, let's get back to the... Before we go, make sure you stay to the end of this video. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. All right, let's get back to the video. And we're back. We're at Victory Lane. Rightfully so. You guys unlocked... The FHP Retro Fleet. Exactly. Wait, man. What was that? Oh, Tell man, me that's... about that. I want to know about that. That's top secret, man. You said you wanted one car. I can't show you all the goodies, man. What was that, <laughs> man? What's it going to take for us to see what's behind those doors? A thousand likes, thousand thumbs up on this video. Huh? Oh, but wait, a thousand, there's two cars. Should be okay. Two okay. thousand. All right. Two thousand likes on this video, and we're going to follow up with FHP and see what's behind these doors. Now I bet you're wondering, how in the world are you standing where you're standing right now? At the Homestead Miami Speedway. How'd you get in? Did you sneak in? Well, no. The Florida Highway Patrol Agency has a great working relationship with the Homestead Miami Speedway. They were kind enough to allow us to showcase the vehicles that we're gonna be seeing today at a NASCAR stadium. Look at that, guys. Look at that. This is probably the most epic place that uh, we've ever been on this channel. While we're talking, I see our host of the day pulling up in his Camaro. Woo and who might that be? Lieutenant Camacho! What's going on, What's up, Nick? Back on the vlog! What's up, man? Yes, sir. Happy oh, to be here. God! Man, I'm gonna say it like 500 times throughout the vlog, but my man, you came through. Hey, we promised the Nod Squad we were gonna do it, and here we are. So, LT, I must say this. This is impressive. Yeah, it sure is. Hey, did you remember to mention the awesome relationship FHB has with Homestead Miami Speedway? Yes, I, I mentioned uh, briefly about it, how you guys work together, and that they were awesome enough to allow us this space to showcase the vehicle. Yeah, big shout out to them, big thank you to them. This venue is amazing, and really it's going to help contribute to the awesome results of this video. So, it's the moment you guys been waiting for. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's start the Retro Fleet.
So before we run her down, Nick, you know, in recognition of the Florida Highway Patrol's 80th anniversary, you know, we're going back to 1939. And here it is. This is where it all began. This car right here, the 1944 Ford Coupe. Uh, let's go back to 1939. Our first academy class graduated 32 troopers in Bradenton, Florida. 20 of them were issued this car right here. The other 12 were issued Harley Davidson Model 84 motorcycles. So this car right here, the Flathead 85 V8 1944 Coupe. Wait, wait, wait. Quick question, because I'm noticing. Uh, are we gonna do a light show with this thing or not? Yeah, let's do the light show, of course. Ready? You guys ready? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. There it is. One light. One light. That's it. <laughs> all I need is one light. That's it. Guys, all jokes aside, this was it. This was the emergency lighting back then. There's one red light in the front, one red light in the back. Again, we focus on the color scheme. You still see that black and tan, that traditional black and tan. Again, this is where it all started, guys. You see the State Highway Patrol insignia. And you know, quick note, these cars, they didn't have air conditioning. So the troopers back then, you know, they're the real troopers working in this same heat that we have today in that car. They were all mandated to wear long sleeve uniform shirts without air conditioning. So they got by and uh, that made uh, their job a little bit harder, that's for sure. So that pretty much meant if you got stopped, you were getting a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the insignia here is a little bit different. Currently we have the uh, insignia with the state flag on the side of the car, but this was actually our patch that we have on our uniforms. If you notice, this one actually says Florida. These, similar enough, don't say Florida, they just say FLA. And this was actually the insignia that was on the side of the car back then, that's what was utilized. And then again, the insignia in the back, similar to our patch, with of course the State Highway Patrol lettering in the back. First things first, crank the AC. I wish I could. No. no. Okay, then let's put on our seatbelts. Oh, no seat. None <laughs> of that either. None of that either. Okay, so. <laughs> Alright, well now that we got that out of the way, let's go for a spin, or not really. <laughs> let's run her down. Pretty basic panel here. Your speedometer, your fuel gauge, your temperature gauge, battery, oil pressure. Uh, no controls for AC because there was none. This little uh, guy right here with a C, that's for the choke, for the carburetor. Uh, you had to choke. Uh, you know, engage the choke before you would start it. It would help you in cranking the engine a little faster. Uh, this L is for your lights. T is for throttle. You could actually control the throttle right here along with your foot pedal here. So right here is the transmission shifter along with your clutch, three speed transmission. Other than that, that's about it. No power windows. So is there a horn? Yeah, but it's not on. Or is that like a teeny tiny airbag? <laughs> <laughs> Choke. Lights. Lights. Throttle. Throttle. Where's the uh, Where's the turn signal at? Oh, it's a good question, man. Here it is. No. Old school with the hands and stuff. Old school. What do you What do you know about this right here? Left turn. Oh, that's right. That's what that means. My turn signal is more like a robot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I throw it to this side and I throw it over there. All right, ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. All right, here comes your turn signal. Ready? And I throw it. Oh, we're turning that way. There, there it is. is. There okay. it is. Oh, throw it back. Throw it back real quick. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's next? Have a look.
Nick, up next in the fleet, 1993 Ford Mustang 5.0 LX SSP, special service package. These cars at the time, it gave law enforcement more of a high performance, better handling option uh, to overtake some of these high performance vehicles at the time. So here it is again, uh, the legendary 5.0 Mustang and we were lucky enough to use them as patrol cars. So from the top, of course, 5.0 VA package, State Trooper insignia, don't forget the 5.0 badges. Original wheels 15 inch at the time. Now let's talk about our light bar here. The Jet Sonic light bar made by Federal Signal Corporation. At the time, this was where it was at. Uh, as we know now, it used to draw a lot of power from the car, a lot of moving parts. Siren is integrated into the light bar itself. So the siren is that big uh, thing that you see in the middle there. So again, 1993, no LEDs. So what this is, it's an actual light bulb with a rotating gear case rotating into a series of different color lenses, blue and white, which is what gives it that flashing pattern. No LEDs where you can adjust the patterns here, just a simple rotating gear case with one bulb with different color lenses all around it. Now, again, we talked about tradition in the last video, and FHP's big on tradition. The traditional paint scheme, as you still see here, the car is still in factory condition. And let's not forget the tailpipes. So the rear deck, again, we have the strobe lights that were mounted onto the rear panel here. Uh, some of the newer cars, you see them integrated with the LED lights. But of course, being 1993, this was the best available technology at the time. The strobe lights mounted on the rear deck here. exhaust sound they always made was always a favorite for all the Ford fans and quite honestly it was a pretty awesome patrol car for the time. Can we take a look at the inside? I'll tell you what Nick, get your b-roll I know you like your b-roll yeah. and then we'll take we'll do the inside as we ride around the track how about that? Ride along. Stop. Highway Patrol back in 1983 they actually decided to add the Ford Mustang uh, SSP special service package to their fleet again at the time uh, it gave us a more high performance a better handling option uh, compared to some of the other cars that were being used as patrol vehicles so when the Mustang came around it was known for its handling capabilities and it really uh, gave us a much better uh, option uh, when it came to performance and of course uh, handling. These uh, originals? So the one at the bottom is the original Motorola radio and they actually put the, uh, the newer one on top. Instead of removing it, again, for preservation uh, purposes, they kept the original radio here. They added the newer one on top. Same with the speakers. If you see, you got two speakers in front of you, Nick. Motorola is the first one, and the one right next to it is the one that we currently use. Tell me, sitting in here, doesn't feel like you just went in a time machine and you're visiting the past. So cool, I could only uh, imagine what it was like back then. You know, there's so many things going on inside of this car. Number one, it's a manual transmission. So you gotta worry about your clutch, you gotta worry about shifting through the gears, you got your radio, 
Not to mention these uh, siren controls and these emergency lighting control boxes, they're not as advanced as they are, as they are today. So more than one box you need uh, to, to control everything. One for the siren, one for your emergency lights, one for your strobe lights. Then you got the radio, you got calls coming in, you're shifting gears, you don't want to stall out, you got the clutch. So yeah. there was a lot going on in here. So as you could imagine, uh, not every trooper back then knew how to drive a manual transmission. So it was actually mandatory if you were going to be issued a Mustang, you had to drive to our training academy and get certified in uh, the Ford Mustang, the, the SSP package. Number one, if you didn't know how to drive stick shift, you learn how to drive uh, stick shift. And of course, you couldn't compare the handling capabilities of this car compared to the other cars that were being used at the time. So troopers had to get certified, number one, in driving a manual transmission, and of course, the handling and all the other uh, better performing characteristics of this car. We wanna run code three. Can we do it? Sure. In the Mustang. So after we stopped using the Ford Mustangs, pretty much our only vehicle was the Crown Vic. So we didn't have any other high performance options until this bad boy came along. From the top 2002 Chevy Camaro, 35th anniversary, LS1 5.7 V8 under the hood, making 320 horsepower. Again, more of a high performance, better handling option uh, when compared to the Crown Victoria. Run down from the top, guys. All original, wheels, everything is just as it was in 2002. Again, the state trooper insignia, the state flag on the side of the car, and this year, they utilized the Whelan strobe light, light bar system. A uh, little bit more light output at the time, it was the best we could get. The strobe light system is very bright uh, and very uh, visible, low profile design. Again, we talked about it having not so much uh, wind noise when inside of the car. Some of the radio antennas, two of them back here for obviously radio communication is very important with our towers. Low profile spoiler, these vehicles are very aerodynamic. They were very capable of achieving high speeds back then. engage in conversation with the driver at speeds of excess of 150. Well, we know the car is capable of reaching those kind of speeds, but we'll make sure we keep it under. All right, I can tell from the start. Automatic, no stick, a little bit easier than the Mustang, so they changed things up. Much easier, less of a distraction, you know, just put it in drive and that's one uh, less thing we have to worry about when we're patrolling. But, still has all the horses. This thing has some giddy up. It actually has more than the Mustang. This one makes 320. The Mustang only made about 205. So this one actually has a higher performance rating than the Mustang. Run down the smart siren box from Whelan. Again, controlling our sirens, all of our emergency lighting, our takedown lighting, all in one box. We have our radio system again for communications with our uh, towers a little bit different than the one we usually see in the other cars this one was modified because the interior of the Camaro is so uh, much smaller much tighter in here 
Uh, so we had to get a different uh, radio uh, system for that. The speaker for the radio is actually behind me, if you notice, in the panel right back here, so that the troopers could hear it better. It's closer to your ear. Uh, being this, this, this engine was a little bit louder, so this would help in hearing uh, all of the service calls that were coming out. Hey, we stepped our game up to CDs now, huh? CDs, yeah. CDs. No, no more cassettes. We're moving on up. <laughs> So a common thing I've been seeing is uh, no cages. I mean, that's tight already. I don't think you could fit anybody back there. How, how did it happen if you pulled somebody over, they had a warrant, or you had to make an arrest? How did, it, how did it go? So like we saw in the Mustang, we see it here in this one. These cars obviously don't have cages. They don't have that partition that separates you from your arresting. So uh, the first thing we did was we would call for another unit, another officer to come with a caged unit and they would be our transport officer. They would uh, assist us in transporting them to the jail. And sometimes uh, those transporting units weren't available. So worst case scenario, we would put prisoners or arrestees in the front seat of our car as long as that they weren't uh, being uh, aggressive. So uh, we would have to put them sometimes right here, right where you're sitting, Nick. I'm getting flashback to the last police car when you locked me in the back seat and you told me I was under arrest. That was a good, that was a good one. That was good. <laughs>now believe it or not this next vehicle is one of the most requested vehicles on the channel can you believe that well deserved it's a staple in police work you guys know what it is i guess they figured From the top, 4.6 V8, 250 horsepower, 17 inch wheels. Again, the traditional clean scheme as always, same insignia that we see on all of our patrol cars. So the 2011 is the last year the Crown Victorias were made after that. Ford no longer uh, manufactured the Crown Victoria, so this is the last year they were made right here. Hold on. Yeah, smells like a Vic, all right. So. From the top here, we have our radio microphone. We have our PA system microphone. The speaker's in the front grill. Our laptop stand. The stand, again, charges the laptop. Our radio for our communications with our uh, regional communication center. And then, of course, the smart box, which controls the light patterns and the uh, sirens. Our printer system and our new Panasonic 360 degree uh, camera system, again, which gets uh, camera angles from each side of the car, the two sides, the front, the back, and we went with this option instead of the body cameras. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, where have you been, first of all? But I'm gonna link it above. That was the first police cars we did with FHP. Uh, here's the link right here. So LT, I haven't given you any chances to uh, plug anything. Got any, any plugs? Absolutely. Guys, this could be you behind the seat of one of these cars. Visit BeATrooper.com if you want to be one of Florida's finest. Uh, follow us. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at FHP Miami. And lastly, a big shout out and a big thank you to Homestead Miami Speedway for allowing us to use this awesome venue for this awesome video. Plug! All right, guys, almost a century worth of retro fleets starting with this bad boy behind us over here. And we ended at the Crown Vic. Four retro fleet vehicles. Uh, couldn't be possible without you guys again. And uh, I think there's nothing else to do but to sign off. I agree. LT, you got it? I got it. All right. But before we sign off, I'm going to say uh, my part like I'm from the 1939s. Here we go. So, take it away. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you. <laughs>
So guys, I've uh, been getting a lot of comments in the comment section to do other agencies outside of the state of Florida. As you guys can see, you know, we're in Miami. It's hard to travel to other places. Hopefully one day, maybe in the future, when we get up. Hey Nick, you talking to California yet?